a recap of last week's episode. Disclaimer, this story will trigger your emotions. It may upset you and anyone else listening. If you need to ready yourself or remove children from the room, please do so now. I'm Patrick A. Kelly, and this is my journey chronicled by significant incidents in my life that made me who I am today. We were taken from love, spirituality, kindness, and a matriarch who stood for right and decency. We were plunged into hell to be devoured by a false idea of safety and protection by a birth mother and a child predator, a devouring and corrupt soul. This soul thrived on self-gratification and sexual pleasures, even at the expense of their flesh and blood. They, coming together, formed a bond of decay, lies, nastiness, plain evil that tarnished our tender little souls depriving us of love, honor, and care in exchange for fear, suffering, sexual and mental abuse, and deep unhappiness. Can you even use the word mother to identify such a person? Lacking sincerity and respect for herself and others, she was cursed by the past and demoralized by the wickedness inside her. But no one outside of our family knew this person because she created an idea of a person wrapping herself in the word of God and seemingly cloaked from head to toe, shielded with the St. James Version. The number 706 is the house number where we all grew up, our prison and misery, and the horrible imagery still lingering with us today. About six months after we began living in Baltimore with our mother, Elaine, and stepfather, Albert, our lives worsened. Out of no fault of our own, as we were seven and eight years old, they began mistreating us, beating us, and limiting how much food we ate. Our mother was and is one of those women who would instead care for, listen to, and support a man over her own children. Our parents began gauging how much food we ate, and instead of feeding us when we were hungry, they would send us outside to play, to fend for ourselves. We became so desperate and hungry that we ate crab apples from a tree at a playground. We began stealing at the local grocery store and the refrigerator at the house until they put a padlock on it. My sister Donna would sneak and cook while one of us was on the lookout, but we were always caught and all got beatings for defying them. My mother would pick on and beat up my older sisters, Lisa and Vicky. She would also beat my sister Donna and me. I remember how she used to box Lisa and pick on her for no reason. One day, she hit Vicky with a two by four, but that wasn't anything new, as we all got beatings with switches, tree branches, extension cords, pieces of wood, pots, frying pans, and hot irons. My stepfather came up with a scheme of beating us without clothing because he wanted to see the girls naked, especially when they were mid-teens with budding bodies. My mother would pit my sister Donna and me against our stepsisters to war and fight with them. And while all that was going on, my stepdad was molesting my sister Donna and older sisters Lisa, his blood, he molested Vicky, also his blood. I can remember my sister Donna telling our mother what our stepdad did and was doing to her, and my mother cussed her out and called her a liar. She did the same to Lisa and Vicky. Our mother had the idea that because her husband was touching the girls, especially because they were older, they were trying to have her man. He also tried to molest two of my sister's girlfriends, one of my girl cousins, and my youngest aunt. When my sister Donna told him she would tell her mother, he would say, go ahead, she's not gonna believe you anyway. Everyone our stepfather molested or tried to molest went to our mother, and she called them liars and cussed them out. One evening, we were all at the dining table, having dinner. 
and I don't remember if it was Vicky or I had asked for seconds, but that was the day the stuffing began. They made all of us stay at the dining table and began sharing pork and beans in bowls and passing them out to each of us. They said, you hungry? Eat. They made us eat the bowl of pork and beans. And when the first bowl was empty, they poured it on one bowl after the next and made us eat until we couldn't. They told us they would beat us if we didn't continue eating. So some of us continued eating until we threw up all over the dining room table. And my stepsisters got beatings when they wouldn't eat. The food deprivation and stuffing continued for years. One evening, we were all at the dining room table. I think my stepsister Vicky and I were about 14, and my sister Donna was 15, and Lisa was a few years older, but our parents tried to stuff us again, and we rebelled against them. We overpowered both of them and put a beating on our stepfather. We almost sent him to the hospital. That was the day when some of the mistreatments stopped. A few months after the rebellion, my sister Donna got put out at 16 years old and lived homeless from family member to family member. My sister Lisa also got put out after a last big fight with my mother and she turned to drugs and never recuperated. Lisa eventually died from complications due to her years of drug addiction. I still blame our parents for what happened to Lisa. My sister Vicky, Vicky joined the Army after graduating high school, and we didn't see her for years. I got put out when I was 18. Five years later, I left for Atlanta, and the family didn't see or heard from me for over 10 years. Many years later, I heard that my stepfather had gotten worse. He was a drunk who tripped down the basement stairs and cracked his skull. He would remain in intensive care for three months before he passed. I remember being at a funeral and my sister Donna and I were on stage giving a speech just before we sang a gospel song. We decided to forgive him for being an accomplice to our hell. Our mother is still alive, but we don't have a relationship with her. The last time I visited her after her second husband died, I felt felt like a total stranger. It felt weird being around her, and I didn't want to eat her cooking. To this day, you can hear her bragging about how good my sister Donna and I turned out and how good we were doing in life. We attempted to have a conversation with her a couple of times about what they did to us, but she would act as though she did nothing wrong or did not remember. Both my sister Donna and I forgave her too. We still love her, but it is tough being around her. I do sometimes pray to God for her though. Looking at my mother now, she wears the guilt on her entire body as God has placed a mark on her and she is slowly withering away. She is now 68 years old, but doesn't look her age. She looked much older. My sister Donna says she apologized to her once, but it didn't seem sincere. I can't understand why God allowed us to go through what we went through, nor do I know that what I had gone through was a precursor to making me a better person later in life. But I can tell you, I do not have a hate bone. My heart is love, and I want the best for everyone, whether I know you or not. Our lives could have gone so many ways for the worse, but it didn't. So I thank God always, because while I was going through what our parents did to us, God was always there teaching me and showing me premonition. So I thank you, God, always. Welcome to Journey 365. I'm your host, Patrick A. Kelly. So before we get started, 
please join us in an open prayer. Lord, we thank you so much for allowing us to be here tonight. Lord, I thank you for allowing my sister Donna Kelly to be here tonight as well to support what we're doing and to also bring context to the show. Uh, we thank you for all that you have enabled us to do and all that you will enable us to continue to do uh, moving into the future. We thank you for everyone who has supported us, those who are seen and unseen. We thank you, dear Father, for uh, blessing us and also for allowing the show to grow exponentially, dear Father. Lord, we ask that you continue to send people to us who are looking uh, to be delivered, who are looking to share their journey and through them sharing their journey, be delivered. Amen. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight. We do have a special guest, Donna Kelly. And full disclosure, Donna Kelly, of course, is my sister, older sister by one year, and she's also my best friend. I decided to bring her on tonight uh, for the continuation of episode four. This is part two of 706 Torture and Molestation Under the Guise of Christianity. And I'm bringing her on so she can add a lot more context to what we went through as children um, and how our parents treated us. But before we get into that, though, I want to say my thank you. I want to thank God for all that I have, um, all that I have received. And, and, and I'm definitely appreciated. And Don is also going to join in with a thank you. Lord, I thank you for allowing me to be here right now, tonight. Thank you for allowing me to be the vessel. Thank you for allowing me to be the message to bring others to you. Thank you for allowing me to speak my truth and to be brave enough to speak my truth. Thank you for uh, how people have received it. We're now on episode four. And I'm just so appreciative um, of what you're allowing us to do. So, Donna Kelly, what are you thankful for? Wow. I'm always grateful. I'm grateful to be here. I thank God for allowing me each and every day to continue with my life and my journey. Um, my life has been such um, a blessing. Um, I, I'm grateful and thank God that he allows me and give me the strength to um, endure what I've endured and continue to move forward in life as far as uh, my journey in life. So I'm grateful and I feel highly blessed and favored. Amen for that. You know um, that uh, we're on episode four. Uh -huh. which is the second part. And of course, uh, it's titled 706, mm -hmm. uh, Torture and Molestation Under the Guise of Christianity. And you know that the reason why I titled it uh, 706 is because 706 is the house number where we grew up, where everything happened to us. So um, what I would like to do, because how I basically wrote out uh, the first part of episode four, I talked about our journey to the States. So mm -hmm. what are some things that you would like to talk about as far as your journey when uh, you, when you and myself and our aunt Cherry uh, came to the United States? Mm -hmm. Well, coming to the U.S., of course, I love my aunt, Aunt Cherry. And growing up in Jamaica, being around her was always a very happy moment for me. And we came here to the state with her when we came here. The journey here to me was a journey that I was not expecting once I got here. So what I've experienced Coming here, everything was difficult for me and very confusing. And even after um, going to in the home with um, our mother, it even got difficult, more difficult, I must say. So um, my journey here and my experience being here 
as a child was very difficult for me and it, it was never fun for me and it was very hurtful. Okay. So before we really, really, really dive um, into talking more, giving more context on the episode, um, after, after the first part of episode four, I thought about everything. I was like, well, we, I think we should give context to who um, Elaine is. Elaine, who is our birth mother. Can you provide some context to who she is as a person? Well, to me, I felt like I never knew who she really is. I only know the side that she showed. And the side she showed was somebody that was not loving. She didn't show us love. For one, she left us in Jamaica when we was um, babies. So coming here and being with her, I felt like I never knew who she were. And even after I got here and resided in a home with her, I still didn't know who she was because she never showed us love. She was always just um, mean towards us and, and abusive to us. So I never knew who she was. I only saw the sign that to me was evil. Wow. Um, and and on, on my side, um, I had to really and truly think about that. And I think the only uh, description that I can give about my mother is what our grandparents used to say about her, how she was very unruly um, growing up as a child, very disrespectful. Um, and just, you know, some of the things that she done and, and you know, she got beatings and stuff for uh, because she was very disrespectful to her parents. So, um, you know, what the Bible say about the sins in the, of the mother and father going the third and fourth generation. So I guess that was, you know, when you look at it, that could be her sin falling on us, even though it's nothing that we did. But, um, you know, we, we, we felt the brunt of that, you know, in all the, uh, what they say, hurt people hurt people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she was hurt growing up and she took a lot of that out on us. And, and let me chime in. Um, her, let's, when you say hurt people hurt um, other people, I, I didn't feel like her parents was abusive to her. I felt like what she did as a child, um, her parents reacted to her because um, as her parents said, she was very rebellious. So if you are a rebellious child, some, some parents don't know how to deal with that. So they disciplined her the way they knew how to discipline her at that time when she was being disrespectful and rebellious. Some people might call, this, call it abuse. So um, that's how I see it as far as um, her, when, she grew, when she was growing up that, you know, her parents said that she was very disrespectful to them. So they, they had to discipline her the way they knew how to discipline her at that time. Exactly, exactly. And um, just you know, continuing on to my description of who I think she is, um, just looking back on our life growing up and how not only how she dealt with us, but how she dealt with other people. She said anything that she wanted out of our mouth and had a problem if you did the same to her. And lie, she lied a lot. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and and everybody out there listening to this, this is not a pour on to our mother. This is for you to gain insight on who our mother is. Um, because at the end of the day, I don't think either one of us, my sister nor myself, will come on here and talk badly about anybody. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't make none of it up. Yeah. So, you know, and it is what it is. Yeah. And, and, and I know we also had a conversation about our friends and how they looked on us because we, when we would say certain things that our parents did to us and we didn't have a relationship with our parents, they would look they at us. They used to judge us. It judge us. So we got judge. Yeah. yeah. Expound on that because I remember you were telling me that about one of your girlfriends um, said something like that. Yeah. Um, well, um, a girlfriend of mine, um, she had a close relationship with her parents, her mom. 
And when I used to say, well, I didn't have a relationship with my mother, and I felt like people judge me for that. And I always say, nobody can judge me for something, want something that I've experienced in my life. Yeah, she burns me, but she wasn't a mother to me, and I never knew her as a mother till this day. Can nobody judge me on that? Because I know what I've experienced in my life, and I know that she was never a mother to me. Yeah. So that's why I have a relationship with her. And it's not that I didn't try to love her and build a relationship. Every time, every time I tried it, only thing she did was damage it every time till I just got tired of it. Yeah. And how how old were um were you and I when she came to the States? You were one and I was two, I think. I had to ask my aunt. But I think you was one and I was two. We got to the States when you and I were seven and eight. Yeah, I was about eight. I guess I would think that, you know, one and two years old to leave your kids to come to America, that those are, I think those are the beginning stages where a child, uh, you know, from birth on start bonding with their parents. So we came here to someone who was a total stranger. This is my take on that. I'm not blaming her for leaving her um, when we were babies because we we don't know what the situation was when she left. Foreigners normally come to the state for better opportunity. So I'm not blaming her for leaving us when we were younger. What I blame her for is when we got here because it's never too late to show your children love and and you know show them nourishment and love and and, and, and treat them right. It's not too late for that because um, we can, you can love and show somebody love at any age in their life and nurture them, you know? Yes. So I'm not blaming her for leaving us while we were babies, you know, because she had the opportunity to come here and she took the opportunity to come here, I guess, to make a better life for her. Let's go into like into the episode a little more. So after we got here, you know, I spoke about how, you know, she mistreated you and me um, before Vicky and Lisa came and moved with us. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it was something to do with the fact that I felt and I think you also felt that we weren't blood children of Albert. Yeah. And and. To me, how I felt about that situation, the reason why we got treated differently, yes, um, Siobhan's dad was now a dad, but at the end of the day, as a mother, this is how I look at it because I'm a mother. You are a mother. You had your child for nine months, so you should have that connection with them as a mother to know that, hey, these are my babies. I don't care what that man did that have nothing to do with my children. And I think we got blamed in some aspect for that. You're right, because I do remember when we were small, she used to say stuff like that. Uh, she used to talk bad about our father, and I mm -hmm. felt as though that she was mistreating us because mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she, she had this way, like she used to try to get us to hate our dad. You never was mean to me, nor you. Always loving and caring from what I know of my dad. My dad never mistreated us. That I can attest to, because, you, know, yeah. you know, I, I used to come to Kingston. Uh, I do remember that a time when I stayed in Kingston with y'all. Uh, this was when he was with... Um, Sonia. Yeah, yeah, when he was with Sonia, and he had his shop in the back of the house. Yeah, I remember when I came and lived mm -hmm. with y'all. And you're right. I mean, he used to get up every day. He used to work and then come home and cook for us. But she used to try to get us to dislike our dad and say bad things about him. But that didn't work for me because at a young age, I always had a strong mind. You know what? And, and I too felt that way because what she said about or, or used to say about our father, it didn't have an effect on me. I think the relationship that I personally had with him had an effect. It wasn't anything that she said because I think, um, you know, from eight years old and up, we 
started getting a general idea of who she was. Mm-hmm. We knew that she was mean, so we and and we knew that she lied a lot. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the stuff that came out of her her mouth, we didn't believe anyway. Um, when they really first started mistreating us, you want to expound on that a little bit? Well, um, to me, I felt like we never had the privilege to eat what we wanted to eat anyway. And at a young age, it was always we get disciplined um, if we say we were hungry. Most of the times, we were scared to ask for food anyway. Um, the apple tree was our savior many a days from starvation it, because it, that apple tree was our best friend. We basically live up there until it was time to come in and take our bath and go to bed. And this is the apple tree that I wrote about, uh, the apple tree in the playground. You know, because they did deprive us of food, they would just send us out to play when we were hungry. Mm-hmm. And the apple tree did save us. That and, and, and steal it. I stole out of the refrigerator because I believe that that's where I started to eat. Out of the refrigerator, out of the house that I live in, that food belonged to me. And when we first came here, the government would always give parents uh, money or supplement, whatever you call it, um, to take care of their children when they first bring them from a different country. So it's not like they were um, unable to take care of us or unable to feed us. She got food stamps and she got a check every month from the government to take care of us because we were children coming to the state and the government did that back in those days. I'm not aware if they do that now. It wasn't that we was poor and didn't have anything. They just chose not to do for us. And it, 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 like you said, we weren't poor because we lived in a five, six bedroom home. Yeah. So we each had our own bedroom. Yeah. So, wait a minute. So, women, you and somebody shared, or was it Vicky? Who shared in a bigger room upstairs? In it? it was me and Lisa. Okay, so you and Lisa was upstairs in the bigger room. Mm-hmm. My room was on the second floor. Vicky second floor. Was up yeah. on the second. Mm-hmm. But we also had two bedrooms in the basement. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, so it wasn't, you know, and, and I didn't expound on that as far as, you know, uh, you know, talking about our fa- our financial situation. Um, and, you know, I wanted to leave it for part two. And yeah, we it wasn't like we were poor. We lived in a five, six bedroom home that was three levels. Um, and anybody know Baltimore um, in the village area, you know what those homes are like. Mm-hmm. Um, they're they're very they nice size homes. Yeah, nice yeah. size homes. So mm-hmm. um, I think it was a, a situation where they just wanted to be mean to us. You know. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we're gonna go into the second section. It was bad for me and Donna when we started living with them, but things went from worse to horrible. Uh, within the years that uh, Vicky and Lisa uh, was also living with us as well um, because our mother would fight with Lisa. Lisa was, how old was Lisa when she came? Lisa was what? I think she was about 16. 16, yeah. So because Lisa was older, I don't know what it was between our mother and Lisa, but she picked on Lisa every day. And would always fight on her and beat on her. And Lisa used to fight back because she felt as though, one, she was her mother. And two, she was she was being unfair and mistreating her. Mm-hmm. You want to talk about that a little bit? Well, uh, my experience with um, Lisa, Lisa was always my favorite I, I, because uh, me and her were the oldest. So we got along so good. Um, I love her. She was always my favorite, and she was such a sweetheart. Um, to me, from what I can remember, we were really good children. And Lisa, to me, when she started mistreating her, it was like, I think she was jealous of Lisa for one. She was, because Lisa was so beautiful. She was. Beautiful, straight. Yeah. She was a straight A student. Did you feel as though that she tried to compete with you girls? I think she did. I think she was jealous of me, too. I've been to this day. I think she's jealous. Yeah. Wow. And what were some of the things that she did as we were growing up that you felt as though that she was trying to compete with y'all? 
quick and honest, she watched what we did. And one of the things that I felt like um, she did to us and did to me personally and, and to Lisa, because we was the oldest, I always love nice things. As I started growing up, like getting into my adolescent, um, young adult um, age, I started finding out what I like. And she will go out and willfully buy things for us from the thrift store. And, and it's another store called Payless, I think. She used to go out and buy things that she knew that we wouldn't like because I always had interest in, in myself at, from a young age, from I started getting older. So I owned certain things I didn't like and certain things I like. And I felt like she was jealous. So she would go out and buy like the worst things and especially me, she would um, put pressure on me to wear it. And if I didn't wear it, then I would get beaten. Welcome back to Journey 365. I'm your host, Patrick A. Kelly. And we're still here with Donna Kelly, who has given us some really great insight on uh, the topic at hand, which is 706 which is the house number where we grew up and the torture and molestation under the guise of Christianity. We thank her so much for her time. Let's get back into the interview. I'm your host, Patrick A. Kelly, and we're here with our guest, Donna Kelly, and we're going to jump right back into it. I know, uh, Donna, we were talking about, you know, our mother being jealous of you girls and, and the things that she used to buy y'all. Yeah, I just feel like um, she would go out and buy things that she know that we wouldn't like to be vindictive towards us. And I, to me, that's a form of jealousy. And, and what did she do to you all when you would, didn't wear what she bought? Um, she beat us. She would beat us and punish us. I do remember we used to sneak because she used to make us wear the same clothes for what, a whole week going to school? I got tired of other kids bullying me about why do you have on the same clothes? You just wore that yesterday. You just wore that two days ago. And I got tired of that because for one, it's cruelty that your child have to wear the same clothes for a whole week. Why is that? What's the purpose of that? When we had clothes, I'd rather change my clothes every day and wear clothes with holes in it, if that was the case, which it wasn't the case. It was just cruelty. They just did a lot of malicious, evil things to us. And because of that, we got bullied. We wore the same clothes for about a week till I got tired of it. I started packing my book bag and I would take the, the clothes that I wanted to wear. Wow, I feel so proud to have my big sis and bestie, Donna Kelly, here with us tonight. Um, and I, I, I know you guys are enjoying what we're talking about, but there is going to be a third part. It has to be because it was just so much that we talked about. Um, so come back next week for part three of episode four and where we'll finish up. At age 51, I stopped running from God and I fully embraced my destiny to the calling to be the message, to be the message and to do this podcast and the show. I had to lay myself bare as I'm doing now. So you can understand that this isn't, this isn't a game at all. God is using me. He is using me to be the message for you. And he says, come as you are and be delivered. But to do that, you have to bear yourself to him and everyone because of our strength. God don't give us more than we can handle. And if he puts you through something like what I've gone through or what you have gone through or what you're going through now, it means that you are strong enough to handle it. And he didn't give you that. He didn't give you all of that blessing for you to hold on to it. He gave it to you so you can share it with others 
so that they too can be blessed and delivered and know the love of God. So I thank you so much for being here with me right now because you have had so many other things that you could be doing. Thank you for starting this journey with me and thank you for your support. I can't wait to meet each and every one of you to hear your story for my continued deliverance and for the deliverance of others. Good night. Patrick A. Kelly owns the copyright in and to all content in and transcripts of At Journey 365 podcast with all rights reserved as well as his right to publicity. You are welcome to share the transcript up to a maximum of 400 words in media articles such as the AJC and other notable media platforms on your personal website, in a non-commercial article or blog post, and or on a personal social media account for non-commercial purposes, provided that you include the attribution to At Journey 365 podcast and link back to the At Journey 365 podcast URLs. Media outlets with advertising models are permitted to use excerpts from the transcript per the above. No one is authorized to copy any portion of the podcast content or use Patrick A. Kelly's name, image, or likeness for any commercial purpose or use, including without limitation, inclusion in any books, ebooks, book summaries or synopsis, streaming media, TV, film, or on a commercial website or social media site, such as Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Threads, TikTok, X, etc., that offers or promotes you or another products or services. For the sake of clarity, media outlets are permitted to use photos of Patrick A. Kelly from the At Journey 365 podcast or license photos of Patrick A. Kelly from commercial image platforms. Content shared from Tim.blog.